Yo, what's my one and welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to go over how to use sound effects in Final Cut Pro 10. So this video is going to be like a basic tutorial on sound effects and sound design in Final Cut Pro 10. Just going over a couple of tips and tricks that I've used to just help improve my sound effects and my you know sound effects just in general when it comes to um, Final Cut Pro 10. So the first thing I want to do is go over how to import sound effects. So I'm going to go ahead and head over here and scroll down until I find the one that I want. So here we go, basketball bounce, or in other words, like, you know, basketball dribble. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll in right here. I'm going to kind of go frame by frame right here to kind of you know, take a guess. I can't actually, you know, hear the audio, but let's take a guess right there. And then that's probably where it is right here. Just, you know, to just get down the concept of the idea. Now, the first tip that I want to go over is try to match the audio with the audio capture. So you can see right here, see this little peak in the audio? This is where the ball you know actually hits the ground so I find it really helpful to try to match the sound effect with the audio you know actually captured in your well, with your camera which I encourage you to actually turn up the volume of your microphone when you're recording because it'll probably be a lot easier to just match the sound effects um, with the sound effects or the sound recording your camera obviously you don't you, know, you don't want to peak your audio but I encourage you to maybe just increase the audio because it's just gonna make your sound uh, when you because when it comes to editing sound effects it's gonna make it a lot easier so I'm gonna click on the sound effect right here go over here go to isolate audio right here one more time click on command L and then I'm gonna go ahead and click the slash button right here all that's doing is just looping the playback so let's go over here as you can see it's peaking right here so I think about like you know like negative six point um, five right here now let's see where the audio is going right here as you can see it's at negative six and negative twelve maybe a little too loud but that's the kind of the basic idea um, right there and pretty much the basic idea is you don't want your audio, you want your audio between negative 6 and negative 12 decibels. If the audio goes above negative 6, it's going to start peaking. So you want your audio between negative 6 and negative 12 decibels. However, I think for the most part, most people will require sound effects kind of being like that negative 16, negative 18 um, decibels. But just for the sake of the video, you don't want your audio to be going above negative 6. And again, it depends on how loud you want your audio. So I'm going to go ahead and click on right here. Another really helpful tip, watch the decibels right here. If I click on control minus, it goes down by one decibel. Control plus, it goes up by one decibel. So it gives you a more precise size you know range of your um, decibels and how loud you want it another helpful tool is fading so I'll go over hover right here as you can see right here fade the audio in and then I'm just gonna fade the audio out right there another helpful tool is the range selection tool so let's say this part is a little too loud click on R the range selection tool and let's just go right here and then as you can see right here just keyframe the audio right here so you can see right here it just gets a little quieter 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 and then builds back up so the range selection tool is really nice to get more precise control of your audio especially if there's like a certain part that's peaking and you don't want to raise the entire volume down try the range selection tool also you can go ahead and hold down option right here and you can actually create some manual um, keyframes right there which is definitely really nice this is a really helpful tool to so fade your audio um, in and out right there and then of course you'll know, use the range selection tool to get a more you know, precise you know fade in and fade out of your audio Another helpful tool is color coding. Now if I go over here, scroll down and click on here, assign audio roles and click on audio roles right here. Add an audio role and we'll just call this example right here. And as you can see right here, so we'll go ahead and just change it to kind of like a purple color right there. Now if I go back to assign audio roles right here, assign audio roles example right here. As you can see, there you go. Now you've color coded your um, audio. So it's just helpful to just color code your audio because it just helps your audio be a lot more um, organized. Another helpful tool is adjusting the speed. Now if I head over here to the speed right here, I can go ahead and click on right here, reverse clip. Now all I've done is reverse the audio right here. I can also click on right here, I can also, this is right here, I could slow the audio down, or I could go over here fast and speed the audio up. They may ask yourself, why would I want to speed the audio, slow it down, or reverse it? Well, sometimes reversing it or adjusting the speed can change the sound of the sound effect. So maybe it's not exactly the sound that you want, but before you scrap the sound effect, try adjusting the speed and see if that makes a difference. It's not always, but there'll definitely be some times where adjusting the speed creates some really cool or sounds really um, cool. Next I want to go over is a whole bunch of really cool audio effects. So let's go down right here until you hit audio and click on all. Here are just a name of a couple cool effects. The underwater effect um, right here. Another cool effect is called the muffled. So just take the audio effect and just apply it 
onto your clip right there and then of course you can also go over here i'll go on screen right here you can go ahead and put a low pass or high pass filter on those are the names of a whole bunch of really cool effects that i highly encourage you you, you try out and see if it gets a look again like you know adjust the speed add some effects if the sound effects is not really what you want try to you know uh, tweak it a little bit and if it still doesn't give you the, the sound that you want then scrap it and you know go on and try to find um a new sound effect the next one I'll go over is detaching audio. So if I click on the clip right here, right click, I'll go over here to detach audio. Let's say I don't really like the clip, but I really like the audio captured from this clip, but I don't like the, I like this clip here, but I don't like the audio. So I'll go over here, so I like this clip, but now nah, I don't like the audio. I wanna take the audio from this clip, put it over and line it up right there, and then there you go. Or you know, a certain sound or a certain this and that. Being able to detach audio and use audio from other clips is definitely a really helpful tool, which is always why it's a good incentive, you know, make sure you try to record good sound good sound with your audio and if you can't then go ahead and you know add some different sound effects but try to record stuff with your camera because it's definitely going to sound um really cool because you know you might not always be able to find the best sound effect the next one i'll go over is surround the surround sound feature in final cut so if i take this clip right here go ahead and click on this example right here if i click on this clip right here i can go over to modify right here and audio audio channels and change it to surround now you've changed your entire project to surround sound so if you click on command shift 8 right here as you can see there you go now you basically change it to surround sound so you have the left surround left channel center channel right channel and then right surround so now your project is a surround sound so if you have you know nice headphones or nice surround sound speakers definitely encourage you to try the surround sound effect so yes you can actually create sur surround sound audio in final cut which i think is a really cool um feature the next one I'll go over is a whole bunch of different pan modes in Final Cut Pro 10. So if I scroll down here, as you can see right here, I'll go ahead and just remove the keyframe right here. Now I'll go over and as you can see right here, go to basic surround right here, and I'll go back to create space. So you can see right here, create space is a really good one. It's kind of like a general or a very basic. Um, right here, as you can see the audio is in the middle, it's, going, it's coming from every single speaker. Now if I head over right here, I can scroll down and go to ambience right here. As you can see, the sound is more prominent in like this surround speakers so I kind of have that background sound effect right there now if I scroll down go to um, dialogue right here this is more for talking headshots or voiceovers the audio is a lot more center if I scroll down here and go to music right here it basically allows you to use stereo music in a surround sound mix which is definitely really helpful now another thing you may wonder is can I keyframe the audio like which uh, what uh, speaker it's coming from the answer is yes so if I take it right here okay so the audio is coming just from the right side speaker and I place the keyframe now if I go over here I can go back to pan mode and now let's say I want to go from the left speaker right here so if I play it right here watch the where the, this is basically where the audio is coming from so if I play it right here as you can see it's shifting over to the left speaker so this is really helpful when things are moving let's say a car is moving from left to right or right to left or something is moving from side to side being able to actually you know give it an accurate representation of what the sound is like so for example if a car is moving from right to left the audio is not just going to come to like the center right and left channels it's going to start the right channel and then come out the left channel so it basically gives you a lot more control over where the audio is coming from right there and that's pretty much it this little speed this little icon right here is where the audio is coming from so let's say you record an audio of your own self and you're only coming from the right speaker go ahead and readjust it so it's coming from every side of the speaker that's basically what you have to do if your if your audio is only coming from one side of the speaker it means the panning is messed up so you have to fix the pan mode now you may be wondering, okay, that's great. How do I actually get these sound effects? Or where do you get all of these different sound effects from? Well, I got all these sound effects from Epidemic Sound, which costs $15 a month. I don't even know, probably tens and hundreds of thousands of sound effects. So Epidemic Sound, I think, is the best website for sound effects. But if you want more sound effects for like sports videos, I highly encourage you to up, uh, check out Ty Rogers' um, uh, sports plugin pack. I believe it comes with like a whole bunch of like, it's like 40 or something, 50 basketball sound effects and football sound effects as an NFL sound effects. So definitely go and check out his sound, his uh, sound effects pack. I think he has two, but each costs $40. I haven't tried them, so I can't give my honest review, but I know they're very well respected throughout the industry, and I see a lot of big people using those sound effect packs, so I definitely and highly encourage you to go ahead and check that out and see if you actually, you know, you actually like those sound effects. 
Now the next one I'll go over is a couple little extra tips that I've learned when trying to mess with sound effects for the first time. The first one is layering sound. So as you can see right here, I have the I have this kind of film projector ambient background and this countdown timer effect. By layering sounds, it gives you a lot more depth and it just helps the scene to come more alive. Another helpful tip is using J and L cuts. So for example, let's say I want the audio to come in 10 frames before the actual visual. The visual creating this L, L or J cut, or I can go, you know, have it kind of go like this. So kind of having it come in or kind of fade out before the visual and after the visual, kind of this idea, this J and L cut, is definitely a really cool idea to try out. It's not always gonna work, but it's just definitely a really cool, you know, effect or really cool technique you just try, and maybe it'll make your scene look better, or of course, it might not work. It's just an idea. Another helpful tip is the equalizer. So if I scroll down right here, as you can see right here, channel EQ. Now if I take the channel EQ and apply it onto the audio right here, now I don't have a whole bunch of experience when it comes to EQ, but I'll just go over the kind of the concept and the ideas. So you can see right here, um, from what I understand, this is the high frequencies, mid frequencies, and then low frequencies. So let's say I want to take down the high frequencies, but I want to boost the low frequencies of this audio. Just a really cool kind of tip and trick to kind of just try it out. So try ch uh, messing with the channel EQ to get a lot more you have a lot more control um, over the audio um, right there now what always frustrates me watching these videos on sound effects is people never actually give you the exact names of the sound effects they actually use and that's what I'll actually be doing in this video well, the opposite of that I'm gonna go ahead and go over every single name so I'm gonna put this up on full screen right here but as you can see here are the names of the different sound effects I'll go ahead and put them you know a uh, full screen but as you can see right here there we go. There are all the names of the sound effects. I hate when people make sound effect videos and they don't actually give you the names of the sound effects. It makes it really hard to actually go ahead and find the sound effects. So you can see right there, I'll probably, I've already put them up on screen. I'm not sure you know when I'm actually going to put them up on screen. But as you can see here, are all the different names of the different sound effects. I'll of course put them up on the full screen so you can actually see them a lot better. But it always annoys me when people don't do that. So hopefully, you know, this is nice to be able to actually show you the names of the different sound effects. And that's pretty much it right there. You just color code them, line them up with the video. I use kind of this range selection to a fade and use an actual fade. I find that fades are the audio a lot better. This is just an idea. You can mess with it right there. But that's pretty much um, it right there. Remember the range selection tool just press R to create it, it just get creates key from the audio it gives you a lot more manual control so the range selection tool I think is a big difference between you know pro and amateur I've used it a lot more once I you know understood um, how it works um, and that's pretty much it anyways hopefully you enjoyed this video hopefully you found it helpful and informative if you're new to this channel I upload Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials every day at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time so if you enjoy these types of videos definitely consider hitting that subscribe button also Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial playlist with over 240 Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials so definitely go ahead and check out that playlist if you want to watch more Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials anyways I'll see you in the next one peace